I am an Aaron Boone supporter. I don't know why Yankee fans want to throw him out. This guy in five years has won more games than any manager in Major League history. So you you could say whatever you want. We we were just talking about we were just talking about Jeff Saturday. This is a guy that has no coaching experience, no management experience. He was an analyst and he was working with Alex Rodriguez. Okay. <laughs> and he gets a coaching job over Joe Girardi, who, by the way, bombed. Thompson takes over and takes his team, the same Philadelphia Phillies team, all the way to the World Series and was two games away from winning the World Series. So that I don't think you'll see Joe Girardi as a head, a head manager for a while or maybe never again. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, Aaron Boone, they trust, and they, they trust his ability uh, to push the right envelope on on where these this team is and, and what this team's all about. And and everybody, you heard Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge says he wouldn't have had the season he had this year without Aaron Boone as his manager. So he he preaches so high so so much high praise of of Aaron Boone, and so does Hal Steinbrenner loves him. He said if Brian Cashman's gone, I'm still keeping Aaron Boone. So it's it's crazy. I I think Aaron needs to win next year. If he doesn't win next year. He'll be looking for a new job. I do believe that. How about you? What are your thoughts to Aaron Boone? Do you think Aaron Boone is on the hot seat going into this offseason? Amongst the fan base, I would say yes, always mm-hmm. that is the case. But but to the points you just made there, I mean, you mentioned all the numbers, the wins, the most in five years as a manager. Really, it's the relationships and, and a, the, the, what you mentioned with Judge. It's everybody. He's able to do a fantastic job of – a lot of people think that – you know, Brian Cashman is the manager. The analytics are the manager. Well, they have all that information. And when it doesn't go right, it's so easy for everyone. And the, the headline is another year of the of whatever you want to call it not working. <laughs> but he is able to work through all of that. And does he always make the right decision? No, but no one does. Mm. So they trust him. That's the biggest thing. Um, the front office trusts him. Ownership trusts him. Uh, everyone in the locker room trusts him i mean that the chapman situation could have gotten really out of hand in the postseason and maybe some people thought it did but but they quieted that and aaron boone's you know statement to to the media and everybody was i told him to stay home (laughs) and that was that so you want to win right you always want to win it's yankee land you're looking for that 28th world series championship they're not finishing 60 and 102 but they're not winning 110 games or 120 games, and they're ultimately not winning a World Series. So I don't think he's on the hot seat, but like you said, if they don't win, if the same thing happens next year, um, or they don't even get to the ALCS, or they don't make the playoffs, something like that, then then yeah, I, I think I think people will realize. But a lot also depends on what this roster looks like. I mean, this roster could look drastically different. Um, how healthy is DJ LeMahieu next year? What does the pitching look like after? Does Cortez have another year like he did? That's going to be really, really difficult. Garrett Cole should be solid, but is he going to be a, a Jacob DeGrom level where he, the team wins 25 of his starts out of the 32 he makes? Right. There's just so many unknowns, but I don't think, and, and I mean the affirmation that he got after the season now, he's, he's, not, at the, he's not on the hot seat going in. I wouldn't say, say that. Unfortunately, as a Mets fan, I can actually say that they uh, Jacob Degrom does not win twenty five of thirty two starts. Yeah, the well, Mets, the Mets that's don't true. Give him but, runs. but many of those are two one losses, right? Yeah, the Mets don't I give mean... him runs, so he's they're stuck with like twelve wins and ten no decisions, and then like six <laughs> yep. losses in his starts. All right, yep. so my question is uh, obviously. A lot of things have the regard around whether Brian Cashman's coming back, but trades. Like, is there any trades that you could see being a possibility for the Yankees in the offseason, being that they lose a lot of free agents, too? Is there any guys that maybe are on last year's or their deals, pitchers they could trade for? Because the Yankees are very active with that kind of thing. Do you see that kind of thing somewhere in this offseason? I mean, I see something like that happening, but it's always so difficult um, to predict. So... I mean, the Harrison Bader for Jordan Montgomery trade. Take that for an example. Fantastic for the first, trade for the Yankees, by the way. For the first four weeks of that trade, <laughs> you probably wouldn't have said that. Nobody was saying that because Jordan Montgomery uh, was perfecto out there. No, go for what, what, what were you? Were you not saying that? Uh, no, I was not. Actually, okay. me and Speedy over here were the only ones sticking up for Brian Cashman with the trade. I okay. said – I said I like Jordan Montgomery, and I was upset that Jordan Montgomery because he's been – really the Yankees' best playoff pitcher over the last three years. If you look at his numbers, he's got better numbers than Garrett Cole and everybody else. But 
Bader is a guy that is is a is a is a guy that Brian Cashman finds, and he says, "Okay, I I like this guy. I think he could play defense in center field." Which, by the way, uh, Hicks can't anymore for some reason. Uh, they need a guy that can be a shutdown defensive player, and they need a guy that can hit in the clutch. And Bader, even though last year he wasn't a great hitter. I mean, if you look at his numbers and what he could do well, stealing bases, stuff that the Yankees don't do well, he fit everything the Yankees are looking for. Did anybody think he was going to hit four or five home runs in the playoffs? I did not believe that. But, again, I don't question Brian Cashman when it comes to looking for players. I question him on what he does looking for starting pitching because he has been horrible at doing that. But everything else... Brian Cashman is a genius. I don't care what anybody says. The man has the right scouts. They know what they're doing when it comes to finding players. Yeah, and you talk about starting pitching, too. I mean, I'm interested in, notably, a couple of guys. Mm -hmm. So, Luis Heal is going to come back Mm -hmm. from uh, Tommy John, I believe it was, Mm -hmm. uh, at some point during, I think it's May or June. And... Uh, David Garcia. Of course. What is he going to look like? We saw him two years ago the, mm-hmm. and also during the, the pandemic year with the closed stadiums and all. Is he going to be ready to be a 4A, 4B starter? That's not an option. They need somebody else other than that because they probably lose Tyone. Mm-hmm. Um, would the Yankees like to resign? I think that'd be a good signing to resign Tyone. I don't think he's he's going to, though, personally, but we'll see. Um Those small market deals, not small market, but those deals we're talking about, the Bader for Montgomery, where it's coming from, no idea. Mm. Will it come? Most likely. And I think it'd be a good move. A lot of the talk out there is, oh, well, you can do Otani and Trout for Donaldson and (laughs) uh, Kiner Falefa and DJ. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Even even if anybody's going to take that deal, it's not. I don't think it's a good deal at that point. (laughs) It's just like uh, you see those things. I don't think there's a blockbuster, Mm. but I do think there's some smaller trades out there that we'll see. And you might scratch your head out a little bit. Will every one of them work out? No. Most likely not. I mean, everyone around the Yankee that hopes they do, but 80% of them, almost, almost 85. If you look at every Cashman trade in this situation have been a net positive, mm. but again, you can talk about all this and all that. If they don't win it in November or late October, we have the same conversation. In Drew, I will say this, and and I know a lot of Yankee fans just want to plunge off the building after Houston wins the World Series, and they can't. I can't stand them. Not because they won, because they're a cheating organization. And everybody's going to say, "Well, the Yankees have been caught cheating too," but not the way Houston won yeah, that different. World Series. It's a different. It's a different. Way different. It's not even the right word. Yeah, and, and the fact that this organization has cheated once, I believe they'll cheat over and over again if they could, but. And I, I, I love Carlos Correa on what he said about that, by the way. And that's why I don't want him on this team. I don't want him with the Yankees. And I could see the Yankees bringing him in. Just He's that type of player the Yankees could bring in. He's a good playoff player. He's a right-handed hitter. He hits over those porch, the, you know, right, the, what is it, right field porch or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's the perfect fit for the Yankees when it comes to power. So I, I don't want him there. But if they want to bring him in, that's Brian Cashman's thing. What, I, what I'm worried about with this team is in the beginning of the season, they had the best bullpen in baseball. They, it was, Michael King was it, it, so underrated, and people were like, oh, well, this bullpen's really, really good, and then everybody forgets how good Michael King was. Now he's been out for a significant amount of time. He did not have surgery this offseason, which I understand. You don't want to have UCL surgery because then you're out for almost a year and a half, And but it's a significant injury when you're you're – Breaking your elbow, what did he crack? He fractured his elbow, whatever the heck it was. It was ugly. Yeah, yes, it was ugly, and and he's he he will be back this year. This bullpen, and I, it was really glued together. They were missing seven guys in the in the playoffs, and this was the best bullpen in baseball going into the second half. They were not even close. A matter of fact, numbers would show that in the second half, the Yankees had one of the worst bullpens in baseball. Are you surprised that they went from the number one bullpen by far to one of the worst bullpens in baseball in the second half because of one player? I wouldn't say it was necessarily because of one player. I mean, everything has a trickle down effect after mm-hmm. that. So right, so so Clay Holmes w- was out for a bit. Chad Green, um, mm-hmm. 
Chad Green. Well, I wouldn't even say Chad Green uh, too much. Uh, Ron Marinaccio missed a couple of weeks or close to a month. Mm-hmm. He had a fantastic season. Uh, Albert Abreu kind of fell off. He came in start. That was a you know get him back type of move. Uh, Chapman, I think that's a big one. I oh, mean, God, that, unfortunately, uh, just just lost it. No, um, he just wants, sometimes happens with he just wants to tattoo his leg. That's what he wants to. Well, do. there's yeah. other things too. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you, you 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 get one injury, then a second. And then everyone else is in a higher leverage role. Mm. And then you've got, you know, they, they for Efros and Trevino that they got in trades, they did, you know, admirable jobs. Mm-hmm. But I think everyone expected them coming over where they were doing very well at their respective places in Oakland and Chicago. It's going to be different, especially when you're at, at certain times, they were the guy because, mm-hmm. like you said, five, six, seven guys were out. Loizaga was out for a while. Uh, and Zach, we're forgetting about Zach Britton. He was, you know, out almost for the entire season, came back and then out again. So that's a lot to with, withstand. Um, they had the one move that was looking back. You didn't know everyone was going to get hurt. But losing J.P. Sears, I think, oh, was, a, was a tough one oh. for them in light of what happened after. In the moment, it's it makes sense. But when all those injuries come and compound and when guys just start, you know, they're not throwing to 1.5 ERAs. They're throwing to 3.5. That's a big difference too. Do you think Frankie Montez was as bad as he was? Do you think that the Yankees brought him in unhealthy? Because I do. I think he was never healthy when he came to the Yankees. And I think the Yankees got caught up because of the whole situation with Castillo going to um, Seattle and then signing that contract, which uh, if the Yankees had Castillo, The Yankees win the World Series. I I believe that because having two dominant pitchers go back-to-back and then have Nestor Cortez, I I, I don't believe Houston would have been able to withstand that pitching power that the Yankees had. I think the Yankees made a mistake. I think Brian Cash made a mistake, but he didn't want to trade Volpe, Pereza, or Dominguez. They wanted all three of them in the trade to get him. And and then you you like you said JP they lost Sears and 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 their top you know three of their top ten pitching prospects yeah. in a trade Frankie Montez was uh, a Cy Young candidate about a year ago and he just didn't look good this year and and then then you hear he had shoulder problems and he just didn't look good and and I don't think it has anything to do with Oakland what are your thoughts do you think Frankie Montez uh, having having a full season with the Yankees going into the off season, do you think he'll be much better when the season starts? I think he'll be better. Uh, I mean, he he was noticeably let's call it different mm. than what he did in Oakland. Two things though: one, in Oakland, mm. and sentence there, um, and two, injury, dealing with some uh, some personal uh, uh, grief in the family course, as well. It yeah. was a really tough situation for Montas to come over across the country and be expected to perform right away. And, and he said in various times after some of his starts that he just didn't have it. He couldn't figure it out. Why some, some shoulder soreness, tenderness, et cetera. And again, with, with not a lot of help in the bullpen, like we just talked about because of all those injuries, more pressure is on, you try and make that extra pitch doesn't go your way. It can really spitball. And unfortunately uh, that's what it looked like um, from, you know, from anyone watching. So I think he'll be better next year, much better. We'll have to wait and see. 